though. I'll be talking a little bit about my program and myself for eSports Edu Lab in Las Vegas. Um, should be a good time. Oh! Yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> let's just start start off this interview. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm Dr. Miles Harvey, uh, Esports Edu Lab. They uh, hit me up and they said, "Hey, tell us a little bit about the James Monroe Rating Raptors and tell us, you know, uh, how you've come to be and what's happening." So uh, a little bit about myself first. Uh, like I said, I'm Dr. Harvey. Uh, I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I coach the James Monroe Raiding Raptors in a middle school esports team. And uh, I've been teaching for about nine, ten years. I have a PhD in language literacy and sociocultural studies and emphasis on digital literacy and how games affect the way kids learn. So I've been having a good time teaching middle school while incorporating games and researching. No, it's, it's, it's research, but... Um, I've been having a really good time seeing the effects that games have on kids when you use them in a positive way. And I think video games uh, in esports and education is probably the golden ticket to get video games that second look they need because they've had a bad look for years. So my job as a literacy specialist is to think about the way kids read and write in the world and I see that video games play a huge part in that. Uh, the way they make sense of the world is very digitized and games are something that students play a lot of uh, and I'm hoping to kind of get students to read more books and get more science experiments going on and to uh, really be thinking about how video games can promote interdisciplinary learning and so uh, I do call eSports the biggest front for learning I have ever seen. Uh, at the first glance, you know, you think it's all fun and games, and then all of a sudden you take a closer look and you see all the embedded learning in there. You see all the uh, interdisciplinary STEM-based, STEAM-based activities, the casting, the scripting, the competing, the cooperating, the problem-solving, the training. I mean, the list goes on. It's a... Uh, it's awesome. So, uh, the Rating Raptors emerged out of my love of video games. Uh, I'm a big video game player. Um, but I'm also uh, a huge fan of teaching. Uh, and I grew up, you know, without really ever playing games. Actually, shout out to Miss Warwick in third grade. I remember we playing Math Blaster and Spelling Jungle. Even uh, Oregon Trail. And I, I think, you know, people like me, I'm 32 who grew up with games, um, we're now doing things in society. We're doctors and lawyers and engineers and um, playing games as a child has certainly affected us. Um, we now think in this gamified way. We have this gamer lens that I think some people don't have. And when you have that lens as a teacher, I think that really lends itself to being a creative, um, innovative, oops, Oh, yeah, it's going. Um, practitioner. I mean, we can't use the same materials every year. I mean, there's a projector in my classroom that's hanging up like the old school lamp projector shooting down with the transparencies and the expo markers. And I'm like, I'm never going to use that, you know, unless I had to. Um, because the technology of the day has me using Google Classroom. And um, I'm allowed to use things that really you know aren't gonna blow up in my face like the like the lamp bulbs and uh, I just think it's a fun time to be in school you know you look in a classroom now and you got electron microscopes and you got video game consoles and VR devices I think this is this is really the pinnacle of of educational technology is right now uh, except we're a little bit behind, I think. Ah! Not bad. No, we're double committing, bro. What are you doing? I think we're at a time where, you know, even though 8% of households own a VR device, um, you're going to see that 
I don't know, maybe 1% or less of classrooms own a VR device. And we have I AR devices on our phones and we can use things like merge cubes for AR and stuff, but um, I think video games really are the most ubiquitous form of technology and media that we can quickly infuse into our classrooms. And esports is that first, that first kind of like introductory piece, you know, people always want to know like, what games do I got to play in my classroom to make them for learning? And I said, well, you can just use most games and just figure out how you want to make them useful. Um, and Rocket League's a good one. It's very simple. It's like a soccer game with cars. And people go, how's that education? I go, there's a lot of physics in this game, a lot of cooperation. There's a lot of learning. This game has a high ceiling curve uh, skill. Uh, so, like, you have to know what you're doing in order to get better at the game. And that, that requires experiential learning and some, <laughs> some uh, you know... Some practice. Look at that guy. Nice. Polish man. Beautiful goal. No, I played this game since last May. And as an educator, I've loved just watching myself kind of grow. Um, get better and better. Uh, and I can feel that growth as I play. Um, that's an intrinsic value. As, I, as a player, I've always loved that because just in games in general, like I could always feel the learning. Um, I could always see it happening quite um, literally in front of me. Oh, no, I hit it out of the way. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll pop it up for him. Oh, my guy's like on the roof. What are you doing? All right. Oh, I, but I ran. I, I decked him. Sorry, pal. Oh, that was rough. Sorry. Um, so that's a little bit about me. I'm a gamer. I'm 32. I'm a researcher. I'm really interested in how esports and education are really going to coalesce and um, hopefully make some big changes to the way kids relate with education uh, and the way that teachers and schools try and relate with kids. I, I think, you know, Battle of the Books isn't as popular. And that's not because reading's not cool, but it's because there's just a new wave of technology in the way we make sense of the world. And to think that we're only going to honor books as this sense of media that's important is very foolish, and I think it's selfish. So, here's to esports. Here's to... I want one goal! Oh my gosh! Uh, here's to esports edu in our interview. So, let's get to our second question here. Let me, let me get back into my, uh, my unit. Uh oh. Alright, sorry buddy. Um, question two. Oh god. Tell us about your esports program in general. Tell us uh, how many kids, what games, what leagues, and what's your role. Well, I'm coach. Uh, we got 20 kids in the program. It's our first year at James Monroe. And uh, we had a gaming club the year before, but we weren't competitive. We just played a bunch of games and played Rocket League and League of Legends a little bit, but um, it wasn't really like a focused group. So now we have a focused group of gamers, and we had tryouts this year for the first time, and uh, we just made open announcements. Uh-oh, that's going in. Nope, good save. Uh, and I said, hey, we're having a gaming jam, meaning like we're just going to game for a couple hours on a Friday, and I had 70 kids show up. 70! And we had a lot of machines and switches, and it was just a blast. And I had a couple of adults, and we just picked um, 20 kids that we thought um, characterized good gaming habits and good attitude and put them on the team. Uh, and here we are. We have 20, 20? I think we have 20 students, tw 20 boys, one female. Um, I wish we had more ladies. And uh, we're in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We're called the Raiding Raptors. And so far, we're 26 and 1 this season. And uh, we play Clash Royale. We play Clash of Clans. We play Super Smash. We play Rocket League, primarily Rocket League. And we've just had a blast. Um, we've probably played at least 100 games this season um, in terms of rounds and such. It's a win. All right. Woo-wee. And uh, I think the program is in its infancy. We don't have like a lab. We use my classroom as the gaming lab. Um, 
some of my students are on my team. Uh, it's 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 kind of like your typical basketball coach setup, you know. Um, if you didn't have a gym, you'd play outside on the basketball court by the cafeteria, you know. Um, in my example, we might use a library because we don't have a gaming lab. Uh, we're part of the first ever na nationwide esports league for middle school, uh, created by Chris Al uh, Alves. Alves or Alves? I think it's Alves. Um, first ever nationwide middle school esports league, and there's about 27 teams in it. And I just kind of was active on Discord, and I found him uh, on Twitter, and he invited me to Discord, and he told me about uh, this league. And then there were only like a couple teams in it, uh, and then all of a sudden it just popped off, and we really got it going. I think this year is the year we have broken the glass ceiling for esports. And I think there's more now. I mean, there might be 20 plus, but I think there's maybe 20 active teams right now, but we have like 25 on the list. Uh, and they're all like, you know, wanting to get this going. This is why this video is so important. They want to know how am I doing it? How, how can they do it? Um, why should they do it? Well, it's super fun. Ooh, missed that one. Now, uh... My esports team is kind of large. I think 20 students is pretty big, especially for not having an assistant coach. Um, <clears throat> however, I think I might cut it down to maybe 15 or so because I just don't have the machines and stuff yet to uh, handle the capacity yet needed to keep 15 players highly engaged every time we have a meeting or practice. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Nice shot, Armstrong. Woo! Um, but there's a little bit about the Raptors. So question uh, number three. What initially made you decide to pursue creating an esports middle school program? Hmm. Well, I just figured we had every other sport going on. <clears throat> Everything costs so much money. I thought I could come up with something pretty cool that's really cheap. Um, there's not going to be travel costs. There's not going to be uh, liability. There's not going to be the need for all of this crazy amount of um, equipment and gear. It's really just kind of like uh, any other sport. Hey, can you bring this with you to school? Yeah, let's play at lunch. You know, it's not like, oh my gosh, what do we need to order from China in order to make this happen? I'm like, what? Like... Get, get whatever's in your living room or in your backpack out and let's start gaming. Uh, no, I missed it. I put games in my classroom and I remember kids being like, oh my gosh, I don't understand how you can have games in here. Like, what's the learning involved in games? And I'm like, oh my gosh, society has brainwashed you. It's like back in the day believing like, oh, well, TV is bad for you, and so we shouldn't watch TV. I'm like, it's what's on TV that can be bad for you. It's not the fact that you're watching TV. Yeah, too much TV is bad. Too much games is bad. Too much books is bad. Uh, but it's not about that. It's about having a healthy literary diet. That means that you get equal parts of games and poetry and books and TV and movies and all that stuff. TikToks. Yeah, I said it. Renegade. You got to make sure you do all of it. And I think for me, I thought video games was definitely like a, like a, a void within the classroom. I was like, all right, is anyone acknowledging this? Like, where are the games at? You'd be like, uh, what do you mean? I'm like, you guys know what I mean. Boom. G Wop Wop knows what I mean. Thank you. That's what's up. No, I think it's important. I think I saw the need for it. And I know that a lot of teachers are incorporating it now. It's becoming that hot subject. I mean, my students are happy to walk around with this jersey on. They have a lot of pride to be on the eSports team. I mean, it's cool. It's like uh, a new venture in education that I think people are having a good time getting behind. <clears throat> Question four, uh, what were some of the biggest challenges, unexpected challenges you faced when getting to where you are now? I don't know what just happened. I looked up uh, and just got scored on. I think one of the biggest challenges has been... Uh, working to I don't know like schedule everything uh, initially I had to go on discord and uh, I had to start kind of finding people and I found them on Twitter and 
it took a little bit of work at first, but because of our league with Chris, um, he's put together this amazing list and allows people to communicate and figure out what time zone people are in and what days they meet. And so, you know, scheduling games across the country isn't as intimidating when there's a spreadsheet that says, hey, this, this teacher's in Minneapolis. They're on this time zone. They meet on this day. Aww. Um, and I think that's really cool because then you can start planning ahead. You can say, oh, in February, we're going to play these two teams. One's in Dallas and one's in Phoenix. And um, the kids really rally behind that. I think that's pretty cool. So a big challenge for sure is scheduling, um, but making the time and honoring the responsibility that esports can bring. You know, it's, it's just like any other sport it requires so much of the same perseverance and tenacity as a coach that keeps you excited and involved and you got a plan you got a schedule nice booming shot there wow bad one on me um yeah that's the biggest challenge i think for me You know, and getting off the ground, I think I'm lucky I wrote a grant earlier in the uh, year. It only took a couple hours. I was writing just for a little bit. Um, and it was just like a district grant, you know, about like innovative practices. And I said, hey, I want to do an esports team. And they're like, all right. And I asked for like 2400 bucks, And that's enough to get maybe two gaming computers. Um, but what I did is I started off with like just gaming consoles and stuff that I owned. I just brought them in. Um, but what was unexpected at the beginning of the year was getting that grant. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I had also wrote a grant simultaneously um, for my TV film production class. And I thought that's cool because they actually go hand in hand. Um, the TV film production class uh, gets to use a lot of the same things that the gaming club uses because we're working on casting and streaming and broadcasting and writing scripts. And to tell you the truth, you know, aside from the morning news that we do for our middle school with the TV film production class, I find there's more worth and value combining it with the esports media-based streaming and casting because students are so into the, the digital design and um, the production of all that stuff that it's really neat to work on editing videos and to customize things. I, I just think it's really um, a cool, instant way to produce your work other than trying to put it in the yearly school magazine. <laughs> so there are some unexpected uh, successes. Getting some grants, being able to employ them in the club and in the in the classroom. I think that's I think that's I think that's the whole point of it really is to bring it all together, you know, and not every class needs to be different. They kind of need to work together. Um because in the real world that's how we do things. Oh man, alright, next question, uh, why did you pursue the idea of streaming your games? I kind of touched on that, you know. I think uh, it's really important for kids to get an introduction into media production. Like, a lot of kids, you know, they want to be YouTube stars, but what that really means in the long run is undefined. It could mean that they're going to be, uh video editors, it could be they're going to be movie designers, it could be set designers, it could be they go into tech for green screen technology. Uh, I'm just making all these up. I mean, they could go into makeup design. There's just so many pieces that go into it. It's just like a teenage kid saying, I want to be a pro basketball player. I'm like, oh, you know what that really means? That means you're going to be a trainer, a coach. It means you're going to get into sports marketing, design. I mean, there's so much embedded within it. So when we talk about esports, it's like, why do we stream games? It's because we want to prepare our kids for a future that may involve some type of media that requires them to record and screen and write scripts and have experience working with tech like we're doing here. I mean, why just give an interview when we can also talk about and play the games that we're, we're using? I mean, it's about using two things at once, right? I think technology helps us do more and more and more. It's awesome. Uh, for a teacher who's just starting their program or club, what are three tips for their success? I tell you, this might be one of the most important questions. I get this question a lot, and I've I've probably answered about 20 of these emails this year. It's like, hey, so I was wondering, how do I start a team? And I'm like, well, 
Start small. There's my first tip. Second, you know, just bring some consoles in at home or, or ask the kids to bring in something that they want to use. And, you know, three, I say just go for it. How do you do it? You learn. You learn by doing it. Um, there are many guides. There are cool guides on Google. There are curriculums on eSports. But the reality is to start a club at your school means that you know your students. Socioculturally, you understand them better than anybody else. You understand why they are the way they are. You understand what it is they enjoy doing. I think you figure out what games they enjoy playing and you start with a little club at lunch. Oh, buddy. And uh, you get an interest. Maybe make an announcement over uh, the intercom and say, hey, anyone interested in, in playing video games and esports? And you start there. <clears throat> you don't even have to play other schools. All you got to do is just make sure that you're getting kids to build interest around esports and gaming that is appropriate and gives uh, gives some teacher in the school a place to play them. So find like either the best lab in school or find a classroom with a TV with an HD input and just go from there. If you're a teacher who has um, like a Switch or an Xbox One or a PlayStation, bring it in. Start that change. Your kids will love it when you bring in something like that and you make a lesson designed around games or just say, hey, at lunch, we're thinking about playing them. Anybody interested? I think you would be surprised um, who might show up. So just start small. I mean, I mean that. Um, and then join Discord and uh, look around on Twitter and start uh, looking around online. Start looking at my YouTube channel, Miles Harvey, for all the school names we play in elementary and uh, middle. And just go from there. You can always contact me at uh, my email that I'll give at the end of this uh, interview. And you can find more information about how to contact the league and how to get a hold of me and... Oh, give me one go! Oh my gosh, okay. Uh, what are some expectations for students as they go to high school and college? For my students, I expect all of them are going to graduate. Uh, the graduation rate in New Mexico is 72%. And I tell you what, if I'm going to look at the rates of all the kids who've taken media literacy and uh, esports, I bet you within the last uh, four or five years I've been doing media literacy and incorporating games, I bet you nearly 100% of my kids will graduate. And I think that speaks to the embedded learning and excitement that esports can bring and, and using tech, especially when I was a language arts teacher, like using video games to enhance what I do and, and, and to treat video games as literature that are worthy of literary merit and to excite kids to read books again. I mean, that was the whole point. Um, that's why kids are going to graduate. It's because they've built a relationship with learning that's beyond test scores. It's something that they've learned to love. It's something they can learn to relate to. Like, kids learn to love, play games, and they build on that. Oh my gosh, that relationship. Oh, come on, no! Um, just like I've learned to love this game, even though it makes me crazy. And it's hard to focus while talking. I gotta tell you what, I'm doing... I'm doing pretty bad, uh, but it's so fun just to rip around. Um, and that's the fun part about this game. It's low risk. You're like, I'm not going to be in trouble for messing up. It's a game. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, for college, I'm thinking that at least, I'm hoping 20% of my kids in middle school end up making an esports team in college. I still expect all my students to go to college or at least have some vocational uh, focus where they are thinking about something beyond high school. Uh, that's just a, not even a, a, an option for my kids. I mean, I push academics. We have great checks. It's really important. These kids are playing colleges already. They're already playing high schools. Um, I'm giving my kids the exposure they need so that they feel comfortable thinking about high school. They feel comfortable talking about college. They're playing esports with kids that are on my UNM, the University of New Mexico team, and they're asking them what you major in and how do you play games in college and what's it like? 
that's like having a big brother that's already in school and you just feel more comfortable about going to school because you already have a little experience with it. I mean, that's what esports is bringing to kids. Non-traditional students are getting non-traditional experiences that are going to lead to changes and are going to lead to educational outcomes. I guarantee that. That's a good quote for the community because you may not see it right now. You might see it in the, the income being produced by these companies like, you know, banking off of esports. But the change you'll see is going to happen in time. That doesn't happen right away. Uh, what's in store for the future of our program? Ooh, getting a lot of wheels today. All right. Um, well, <clears throat> we have the first ever North American Middle School Rocket League Championship coming up in April. We're hosting that. We have about 11 teams so far. Um, you can look that up on Battlefy if you have a team that's interested. Uh, we're going to be trying to go for the championship. We're hoping for win or we're hoping to at least get to the second third round um that would be pretty cool however you never know it's rocket league that's the cool part about it so we do have a big championship coming up um we're starting to play some more super smash um and hopefully we got some gaming computers coming in i ordered them in like seven months ago and it's taken a long time to get in so the students are hoping to get these two gaming computers so i know it's not a lot but um having the high powered cool machines are important and kids, oh, give me one right off the bat. Oh, kids like, you know, kids like those glowing, those glowing LEDs. No, I'm just kidding. You know, it's going to be good. Uh, what else do we got in store? Well, we just got our jerseys last week, um, but we're looking forward to next year. We're going to be hosting an in-school uh, Super Smash tournament. It'd be 32 people. We're going to host it in about March. Um, we'll have free signups, and uh, first 32 people to join can play. We're going to shoutcast it. We're going to stream it. Uh, it's going to be a really fun event. We'll have teachers play. Uh, we'll have community members play. We'll have siblings. We'll have everybody. So it's a fun thing. It gets everybody together to realize games aren't so bad. Oh, Ramsey's good save. All right. Oh, no, 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 no. Help me. Okay, not going to work. All right, so if people can follow you and list your email, all right, what can we do here? Well, um, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm highly active on LinkedIn. You can look up Miles Harvey. I post a lot of stuff about what we do in the club and scholarly things such as uh, articles and presentations from conferences. Um, you can find me on Rocket League. You can find me on Twitter, Educated Lobo. You can find me on YouTube under Miles Harvey. Oh, God. So, if you have any questions or whatnot, hit me up. Um, it's been fun. Thank you, Esports Edu Lab, for uh, the time and the questions. Sorry, it took a little bit to get these uh, answered. Um, but you know what? Even though I played like dog poop, I had a lot of fun today. Uh, it's been fun. Esports Edu, I'm out. Hope to see you in the gaming space.